So I realized that this is the time that I have the most uh, free availability to speak, so I'll try to address things in the car if I can. Um, so the question is, what does this have to do with anything? The fact that the light that we see when we look up at Orion, that constellation, and we see that star, Betelgeuse, that gin ginormous, <laughs> gigantic, enormous thing. So that light is uh, has been traveling for over 400 years uh, until it gets to us because uh, a light year is a, a distance. It's the distance that light travels in a year, which is really, really ridiculously long. I'm saying if you want to just make the calculation, take out a calculator. So you do 186,000 uh, times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. So that last number is a number of miles. It's going to be, I mean, I don't know, in the trillions or whatever. So that number of miles is the, the distance that light travels in one year. So that's called a light year, right? So a light year is a distance. So that star, Betelgeuse, is, they don't know exactly, but somewhere between 400 and 600 light years away from us. So that means that the light that we see when we look up at that star, uh, that photon that's now interacting with my cells in the retina of my eye and stimulating my brain to see a dot in the sky, right? So that photon that interacts with my eye left that star uh, between 400 and 600 years ago. So I was just saying as an example that on Yud Gimel Adar was the yard site of the father of the Ramah. And, you know, that's around that time frame, 1500s. So I was just saying, like, you know, that the light that left that star left the star when the Ramah was maybe sitting Shiva for his father, and it's only reaching my eye now. So that's, that's what I was explaining. Why this is important to understand is something that I explained in the class. And that's the, the fact that the, uh, there are things that we can see that are millions of light years away, right? There's the Andromeda galaxy. You want to look up how to see it, look up online how to see the Andromeda galaxy, but it's something you could see with your eyes without a telescope. You'll only see it as a smudge in the sky, right? But that tiny smudge that you could see is about 200 billion stars, right? 200 billion stars like our sun, like Betelgeuse, like all the other stars that we see. And that's a whole entire other galaxy, right? All the stars that we see in the night are our galaxy, the Milky Way stars, but that smudge that when you zoom in you can see is not a smudge but it's actually a spiral galaxy that you can see with a telescope so that is called the Andromeda galaxy it's another 200 billion stars but that is over 2 million light years away okay so that means that when I look up at the sky and I see that that means that the photons that are hitting my eye left the Andromeda galaxy 2 million years ago now that's a lot more than 5,782, right? According to the laws of physics, we should only be able to see stars that are within 5,782 light years from Earth, but that's not the case. We see stars that are hundreds of thousands and millions and billions of light years away. Um, and the point of that is for us to realize that there's no question about it that the universe is meant to look old. Right? Just like Adam Arishon, Chazal tell us, was created at 30, and that was how he was made, was 30 years old, and any doctor or scientist or you know, any pediatrician that would study him would say, yes, of course, he went through you know, adolescence and puberty and adulthood, and now he's 30, and there's no scientific test that could ever tell us otherwise. So, so too, when we look up at the universe, every doctor and scientist and astronomer will say, yes, it's two million years old, there's no question about it, and there's no test that will tell us otherwise. Meaning, there's no question it's meant to look that way. It's not an illusion, it's not science lying to us, and it's not apicorsus to say that, because uh, just like it's not apicorsus to say that Adam was 30 when he appeared. Now, did it actually take billions of years and, and millions of years and everything like that? Or did Hashem just snap it into being and, and with the creation, he already created these photons most of the way already here. So who knows? And it doesn't really matter. And I, you know, I would say who cares really, because we'll never be able to tell the difference scientifically. It makes no difference hashkafically, um, whether it actually happened or Hashem accelerated time or like you know, all of those books that tried to reconcile it. I don't think we need to try to reconcile it. There's no question it's meant to look old and, uh, you know, 
that, that's what this is all about. So um, I hope that explains why I was commenting on the size and distance of the star Betelgeuse, how long it takes light to reach us, and the significance of that in terms of the way the universe looks. And once we accept this, if we accept this point of view, so then we could really see incredible beauty and genius in the science, right? Like in the science, the way that the physicists and astronomers describe how the world, oh, that was me getting honked at, yeah, um, and describe the world getting, uh, you know, set up, etc. So in that, we see the, you know, incredible beauty and chachma of Hashem, um, of, uh, you know, how he was able to set up the world in such an incredible way. Um, you know, and again, whether it actually happened that way or not, it's really, you know, doesn't matter.